Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Frank here. We left off last time on this, on the Cub Cadet forklift build by cutting the frame. We determined uh, how far apart to spread it to give adequate seating position and uh, location for the for the dash that's approximate. So I, we went ahead and cut out a couple of plates to go into the space on the for the frame and these are these there's room on here for a bend to create this flange here and then fill in the notches that were marked here. There's a notch here and there's a notch up here as well so we modeled these in Fusion 360 and then cut them out on the plasma table last time and I was just clamping up the plate here since I really don't have any easy way to bend this I don't have a break I was thinking I could cut some slots in here with my zip disc and some intermittent slots and that would make it easier to bend then I could just weld weld that, those slots closed once I got it on the tractor and then I realized I have something even better to cut the slots with and that's the plasma table so I'm going to recut these parts I've modeled them in uh, went back into Fusion 360 and I have two of them here now and I created a cut path which goes around and also cuts intermittent slots on both sides here so I've never done this before uh, I understand it's a pretty common technique actually for um, cut cutting sheet metal out where you need to have a bend in it and right now I'm just filled up the filled up the plasma table and get ready to cut these parts out again All right, let's see. Well, I can see one thing I uh, probably should have done differently. I've got uh, entry and exit. I should have had it enter right on the line and exit on the line. Well, I don't think that'll make any difference here on the bend, but that would have made it it would have been better to do it that way. All right, well, all right, we'll take this and let's go over to the workbench and workbench and see if we can bend this. I think it'll work fine as far as bending, but it's not, uh, 
exactly what I was was thinking. Um, actually, yeah, okay, it'll it's going to bend on these narrow spots. Well, here it'll be fine, but down here it's not going to be fine. <laughs> I may have to recut these. Let's see what happens. This is going to bend in the wrong spot because it's going to bend at the weakest point, which is here, which is not what I want. I want it to bend right on the line. I'm going to hopefully be able to save this. I'm going to weld up these little short slots, little short sections, in an attempt to get it to bend back there. Right, that was a mistake. Well, it's not as pretty as if it were done with a brake. But I don't know how I could have done it if I hadn't cut these slots. I think it'll work fine. I think it'll work fine. Get the other one. I just need to make sure I make two uh, mirror images. All right, so this one needs to bend down here.
I've got the two splice plates welded into the frame here, tack welded, and they're not real pretty, but they fit fairly close. I mean, within a sixteenth most places, there's one or two places where it's a little bit more, but uh, we'll weld that up, grind it smooth. It'll look it'll look a thousand percent better. So we'll come back, do some more welding.
A lot of grinding. Got the splices cleaned up pretty well. I'm going to go inside. The welds on here are pretty hot. I mean, I have full penetration on most of them, but I'm going to go on the inside and run for where I can reach, run another bead on the inside just to reinforce the, the joints. Uh, I think it's, I think it's fine. This uh, splice is not going to carry. Let me get this off. This splice is not going to carry a lot of load. Uh, it's not going to carry the load of the lift mechanism or the when the weight of the lift mechanism is the weight of the load on the lift causes the front of the tractor to raise up that load won't be handled borne by this splice because there will be another plate that goes along the side of the tractor that will carry the pivot point for the bottom of the mast and run the length of the tractor most of the length of the tractor and bolt to the frame up front in front of this splice so that member will actually carry the load this is just to hold the tractor together while we're working on it the the load it might take is the way to the operator i mean it will take some some loads but it's not going to be the main structural member that carries the bulk of the weight from the lift mechanism so all right I'm Who's this? This is Brew Brew. What you doing, Brew Brew? Where's Butchie? Huh? Where's Butchie? Where's Butchie? Where's Butchie? Go get Butchie. Go get Butchie. Butchie! Butchie. Butchie! Where'd he go? Huh? Uh-oh, there he is. <laughs> All right. All right, does anybody want a... Does anybody want a treat? Anybody want a treat? I got some treats up here. All right.
right, let me get some boys to sit. No, you got to sit. A little grabby. A little grabby boys. Well, not Butchie. Brutus is a little grabby. Did you finish your treat, Butchie? Finish your treat, Brutus. Come here. Butchie's back over looking there, see if Brutus left something on the floor. All right, you guys. And back to work. All right, so we just finished moving the supports for the foot pads, the forward, now the rear, rearward supports for the foot pads back, 12 and three quarters inches. 
I guess is the dimension. Then measured, I fastened them, I bolted them to the foot pads so that I, we would have the exact position. So assure that they're in the right spot. Fenders installed temporarily. We'll come back next week, cutting the fender some more to make clearance. Hopefully we'll have the metal uh, delivery by then. Uh, my steel delivery that I'm waiting for. Just inter just as a side note, steel, I, when I get the invoice and I get the packing list or the invoice, I'll let you know how much. But based on what they what they quoted me for what I ordered, the price of steel has come down 25% or so in the past six months, which is, which is good news. So uh, anyway, we'll make the drive shaft and continue working on the position of the dash and the position of the seat and making sure that those are you know comfortable for the operator or moderately comfortable given the compromises that we're making as far as uh, maintaining some reasonable turning radius which means not lengthening it any more than we absolutely have to but you know, lengthening it enough so that the seating position is at least moderately comfortable. It's not like I'm going to be spending all day on it, so it's not uh, not that critical that it be, you know, perfect from an operator comfort standpoint, as long as it's usable. All right, so wrapping it up, leave a comment. If you've got any questions, I read all the comments. I try to answer any questions. Appreciate it if you would subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the bell, like, share, all that good stuff. I'll see you guys next time.